morning, guys. Morning, guys. Tammy Trier, TrierWilderness.com. I couldn't help but start this video out here today. Do you see how beautiful it is here? This, what you see, my friends, is the result of freezing fog. I honestly never heard of freezing fog until I came to Idaho. When someone first mentioned it, I thought they were just messing with me. Good morning, Tammy. And uh, this freezing fog is just beautiful. I shared a video on Instagram last year and also on, I think, on our YouTube channel. Good morning, Mark. Good to see you. Um, of the actual freezing fog in action. It's just an amazing to see. This is after the fact, and this is just everything riddled with ice, and it just looks amazing. I'm gonna spin this around so I can show you. I mean, the trees look like doilies to me. It's just, and the sunshine, it's just, it's a glorious day. I hope you guys are all enjoying your day. It is just beautiful here. Let me spin this around. I'm gonna go this way. Actually, let me just, there we go. Okay. All right, so I don't think I can zoom this in. But, I mean, there's my wash line. I mean, that's just, I just love this. Good morning, Diana. Our walk yesterday was just gorgeous. And I'm just going to, excuse my post here on my porch, but, I mean, it's, it's just amazing. How can, you, how can you deny God's handiwork? This is just awesome. So, I just, like I said, I had to start the video out, out here just to show you the beautiful view I have every morning. Granted, it has been pretty gray here this winter. It hasn't been a very um, rough winter. We do need snow. We've had a lot of gray days and moisture, but this week has been sunny and glorious, and I thank God every day regardless of what we get, but this is just breathtaking to me. And when we walk, yesterday a uh, bald eagle flew up right in front of us. It's just, it's just amazing. So I had to share this with you guys. So I'm going to spin this back around. Ha, I'm getting better. I don't have it so close that you, all you see is my nose. We're going to head inside. So I hope you guys are all well today. How is everybody? What is, um, what is one thing that you are extremely grateful for this week? Share that with me. And if you feel these videos are um, helpful to you, oop, I need my beverage. If these videos are helping you and are helpful, uh, you glean something from them each week, if you could do me a favor, ooh, I gotta reach over, you won't be able to see anything. Wait, that light's bright, there we go. Um, share these. Uh, there's a share button, I believe, in, in the, uh, on the screen that you're looking at. Share this and, and um, help me to reach more people. Uh, I just feel that uh, this is a year that we really need to nurture. And, and help people uh, through their varying trials, through their uh, celebrations. Um, I just think we need to really, uh, I don't know, I guess the best way to look at it is just come together, fellowship, have a community. So, today's topic, this was inspired by Tina Mitchell. Um, she's on our YouTube channel, and um, we're talking this year about new beginnings. Um, before I delve into that, I wanted to mention also, for those of you that are new to our channel, um, my family and I live 100% off-grid in northern Idaho, and we live with solar power and live rather traditionally, I guess. Um, and we enjoy sharing our lifestyle, um, our knowledge, and our encouragement and inspiration with others. We are um, a family that is completely faith-led, so... Um, our walk is, in my opinion, regardless what we're going through, it's amazing because God is leading the way. So if you're new, thank you for joining me. Let me know that you're new. Let me know where you're from. If you're watching the replay or you're watching on YouTube, um, don't hesitate to leave comments, ask questions because I can view them after the fact. So if you missed the live, that's okay. We still love you and want you to join us. So um, again, Today's subjects are new, it, our year subject is new beginnings. This class today is on how to stay positive, mainly during the hard, but it's important to be positive all the time, and also to use your fear and your anger to your advantage. 
Um, it's kind of a twofold uh, thing, and uh, I've had the blessing this week to really um, minister to people, and um, one of the things that I am finding is that there's a lot of us that are under attack and fear and anger are oftentimes um, rooted into those situations and also just learning how to be positive. I feel that learning how to be positive is an extreme act of faith and trust. At the same time, it's an extremely hard thing to accomplish because in life we're constantly moving and we're constantly experiencing. We're experiencing good and bad and um, I think that with fear in our lives uh, we tend to lean more toward a negative perspective and honestly guys I don't know that I would have been able to uh, walk this out the same way if I didn't have the positive view on life and on experiences that I do. So what Tina had asked is Tina is experiencing a very similar walk as we are and she asked how I stay positive and it is it used to be an extreme uh, practice for me it wasn't something that came easy. I mean, I've always had a positive mindset, but when you're going through hard times, it's really easy to get wrapped up in your negative and the negativity of things and um, n not be able to see the forest through the trees. So it was a practice that I put in place and I kept grasping at looking for something positive in the muck and the mire. And in doing so, um, it, it's basically a life focused on gratitude. It's finding the sm even the tiniest thing to be thankful for and also removing fear and anger out of your life. I, I thought about this all week and it was really funny, the devotionals that I read this week two of them pertain to this and um, through conversations the last couple days I also realized how much fear and anger mainly fear um, plays a role in our ability or inability to see the positive and also to make um, accurate and um, valid decisions I think that fear is a debilitator. It leaves us stuck and um, unable to think clearly even. Fear, fear is of the enemy. Fear and anger, any negativity is from the enemy. And um, he just loves to instill that in us and knows that it'll just kind of keep breeding. It's like a um, petri dish that it just keeps breeding more and more fear and more and more anger if we allow it. And I think that's the key thing if we allow it and that's the thing that we need to learn to focus on. I talk to you all the time about having a gratitude journal and um, I'm gonna kind of this is my this is my journal this is something I made and I enjoy using it and I'll be honest I've had a very hard time keeping a daily journal. Um, it wasn't something that I committed to. I was trying to, but I never uh, made it concrete. I didn't commit to it. But I was, you know, I recognize the things in my life that I'm grateful for. This has become my gratitude and my prayer journal. And I have now made it an addiction for myself. It is committed and um, I'm going to explain to you why because I think it's important. Um, not only is writing in the journal important to me and being aware of what I am grateful for 
it's not that I have to write it down to be grateful for it, but it is one tremendous, powerful thing to open this up and look back because the average man doesn't remember everything. And in 2016, when I got sick, my brain went to mush and I had a heck of a time remembering things. So the, the link for Evernote is down below. I use Evernote for everything. It's a um, note-taking app that you can search through. Many of you have heard me talking about it. Many of you have converted over to it. So that's another great way that you can journal. I have tried that, but I like, I love my leather. I love pencil and paper. And um, although I would love to write my books that way, it's not really very efficient in today's world with being able to write a book and just send it off and edit it on a computer. So this gives me the ability to do my daily writing. But when I get in a, a funk, in a fog, when I can't sit and pray without my mind squirreling and going in a million different directions, I started committing to writing my prayers in my journal. And um, that has become extremely powerful in that I'm steadfast in my communication, I'm steadfast in unloading my thoughts, and I am steadfast in keeping my direction on him. So if you are currently, whether you're in a, a negative spot or whether you, your prayer life is a little bit slacking or dull and you want to improve it, get a, get a journal and make it your gratitude journal, but also make it your daily prayer journal as well. It's just really, really powerful. And also when you read back over it, um, it can be very nurturing. So, and, so I want you to I want you to in, embrace doing that. That in and of itself will help you greatly when you are walking in a very hard time. The other thing that's really important during a hard time is um, learning where to turn to and where to get um, your cup refilled. What I mean is oftentimes we lose our joy, we lose our happiness, we lose our comfort, we lose our peace when fear sets in and when we are walking through a hard time. Because like I said, it's really easy to focus on the hard. And the reason I'm talking about this also today is because it does apply to new beginnings. If you're stuck and you're, it's really a hard thing for you to try to keep making new habits and making new um, progress, you may fall into this same kind of mindset, same kind of feeling. And it's important that we know how to refill ourselves. Um, I am a Christian. I make that very clear because God has just been working in our lives in a tremendous way. And um, I threw that basket away and uncovered my light a long time ago. And um, I speak very freely of it because without God in my life, I don't know where I would be. Over the last three years especially, it has been, good morning Chad, it has been overwhelming and grueling and crazy, but I will be the first to say that these last three years I would never want to change. I know that sounds crazy, but this and this walk has been grueling, um, horrible, but it has been the most amazing walk I've ever experienced. So much growth, so much has come from this. Our family has, I mean, we were strong to begin with, but we have bonded in such a tremendous way and grown together. And when we learn to put our focus on God um, and, and pull into God and, and, and turn to God for everything, that we are seeking Him above everything else, everything else kind of falls into place. And you know, you will hear people say, and I've said it in the past too, you know, that you put God first and you then put yourself because you need to keep yourself full. You need to keep yourself on top of the game so that you can be the best you can be to everybody else. And people look at that and say that's selfish. But it's really not because if we can keep ourselves grounded and keep ourselves looking in the right place, there's such a peace and comfort that comes from that. And then you go to your spouse, and then you go to your children. But I've taken that to a different perspective lately, and I heard Todd White say this, I don't know, a couple months ago, maybe even a year ago, and, and I absorbed it, but I didn't really understand, and I, and I got it, 
but I didn't actually focus on it until the last couple months. When we put it in the perspective of God, 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 versus looking at it that we've got to have a special order and we just focus on Him, we stay full. Our relationship with our spouse is amazing and our relationship with our children will be amazing. And I truly believe that. Um, and that all comes as a result of knowing how to focus on what's most important, be aware, whether in the good or the bad, of all the things that we should be grateful for, and all the things that are happening around us um, that we, we can't take credit for. And really focus on those things it is amazing um, how you feel and how, how life is, regardless of what you're walking through. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to read something to you early on here. Usually I do this towards the end. But um, Matthew 16, 24. If any of you want to be my followers, you must take up your cross. Surrender is not the same thing as passivity. God's will for your life involves exercising creativity, making choices, and taking initiative, which means we don't just sit still. We trust in Him, but we do our part. Surrender does not mean being a doormat either. It does not mean you accept circumstances um, fatalistically. Often it means you will have to fight to challenge the status quo. It doesn't mean that you stop using your mind, stop asking questions, or stop thinking critically. Surrender is not a crutch for weak people who cannot handle life. Instead, surrender is the glad and voluntary acknowledgement that there is a God, and He is not you. His purposes are wise and better than, you desire, than your desires. Jesus doesn't come to rearrange the outside of your life the way you want. He comes to rearrange the inside of your life the way God wants. In surrender, you let go of your life. You recognize that you are no longer the center of the universe and you put God there. You yield to him. You offer obedience. You do what he says. Jesus was very clear on, his, on this point. Unless a kernel of wheat falls to the ground and dies, it remains only a single seed. But if it dies to self, it produces many seeds. How do you live a productive and fruitful life? By dying to yourself daily. D.L. Moody said, the world has yet to see what God can do with one person who is totally surrendered to Him. Today, kneel and pray. Lord, take me, shake me, break me, and make me what you want me to be. That's a prayer He will answer. And honestly, that is what I feel the answer is in, in our daily walk. And I, and I do mean that daily. We may need to do that daily, just like we may need to have a new beginning. But this is the answer. It is at least in my life. And I, I encourage those of you that may not view it that way to consider it because it is an astounding um, revelation. It's an astounding experience. And um, good morning, Terry. And you know, our life is really at a rough place, but I have never felt more invigorated, more filled, and more at peace than I do right now. And that, my friends, is an amazing feeling when you're walking through a storm. But something I want to encourage you to do too, though, is um, when, when you're walking through the good and life is really grand, don't, don't turn your back on God and don't forget to look for the things to be grateful for. Because at that point, there should be quite a few if life is really good. And you shouldn't have to be, you know, seeking the small things to be grateful for. But if we are grateful and show gratitude every day, seek Him every day, regardless good or bad, we shouldn't have dry spells. I think that when we have the dry spells, that's what allows fear and anger and all the other negative emotions to seep in. And it allows us to brew and stew on all the things that are wrong in our lives versus focusing on what is good in our lives. So, I hope this is making sense to you guys. Um, and, and 
Tina and all those out there that struggle with seeking and seeing the positive things and being positive, it really is a practice and you need to take it day by day, sometimes minute by minute. I've expressed before the things to pay attention to the things we say to ourselves. Uh, I really paid attention to that for the last three years. Whew, I don't know what it is, if it's the glare behind me, but my glasses are giving me a headache. I think it's that bright glare and I can't sit any higher. Actually, I can. I have to do this because it's like bugging me out. Hang on a second. Thank you for the short break. There we go, a taller stool. Ha, huh, okay, I don't have to keep stretching either. My torso is only so long. <laughs> All right, I'm not seeing any comments from you guys. I'm gonna switch over to my Facebook at, app. Not that that's a bad thing. It's just last time I was on here and I thought you guys seemed so quiet and it seemed kind of odd. It was because um, the comments weren't coming across. Can you give me some hearts? Let me know that everything's good and that you're hearing me okay and that you're out there. Maybe leave me a comment just so I can test this. I'm trying to get on. Let's see if I can get on here. Ah, look at that. There's 14 comments. Okay. Now. Okay, here we go. Awesome. I'm going to go back through these real quick here. Now I need my glasses. I can't see. I'm telling you. I'm grateful for my glasses. Okay. Sylvia says good afternoon and it's good to see you my dear friend I hope life is treating you well and you are getting back to good health I pray for you every day um, Diana says good morning y'all had to say that since since I live in the south well thank you I appreciate that <laughs> Sylvia says grateful for my husband coming home tonight from a week-long trip to Phoenix awesome that's always nice and Diana says I am grateful for okay it's not gonna let me read that whole thing. Um, she says, I'm grateful for the Fasting Transformation Summit that I've been listening to the last several days. You know, I didn't, I haven't been involved in that one, but I will say this. I am doing the Daniel Fast right now. I chose to do that. It's a 21-day fast. I started that on my birthday on January 10th. Figured that was the perfect time because it gave me 21 days till the end of the month. And um, the Daniel Fast is meant to bring you to a closer walk with God and um, just open those doors better for you and I was really seeking that and also after my month-long struggle from those crazy eye drops um, I wanted to just give my body a break so I am doing the 21 day fast and I'll tell you what guys fasting is very transformational as it says it is just amazing. Um, I feel very vibrant. I feel very healthy. I feel um, very drawn to God and I just think that is amazing. So um, Diana, I hope that you're getting as much out of that as you can and that and I encourage you guys you know to experience fasting. We are encouraged as Christians to fast wanting to seek a stronger walk with God and um, sometimes seek answers and it is actually very good for the body, but uh, I there is something very great to be said about it. And the Daniel fast is uh, set up to uh, it is a fast that Daniel did in the Bible, and uh, I feel really great. So I encourage you guys to try it. Tammy says I am grateful for the reduction of stuff around here. It makes me so much calmer. How about it, sister? I I totally hear that. I am going to be doing a video upcoming on what I've purged and what I've kept and why I'm keeping what I'm keeping right now as we go through this process. Um, there are things right now that I am keeping, but it's because it would be really foolish, like light fixtures or um, different things that I could maybe use in the kitchen that I haven't used in a while, but there might be a possibility that they might be needed in, in our new home. Therefore, it would be really foolish to have to go out and buy those things again. But at the same time, they're sitting there, and I'm really anxious to see if we use them up there, and if we don't, they're going. So decluttering is amazing and very inspirational and causes great creativity. 
This, my friends, is the start of a pine needle basket. I started my for first class last Friday with my dear sweet friend, Pat Frost, and she is teaching me, she has been doing this for 40 years and has been teaching throughout the 40 years and she is going to retire from teaching. I am, um, she said I'm her last student and I am very honored, but I am really excited to be learning this skill. There are ponderosa pine needles all around me and I will be foraging pine needles um, upcoming and probably taking you on that journey too. You will be finding a lot of shorter videos coming to our YouTube channel so I encourage you guys to go over there and sub subscribe. You can do it real easy by going to tryyourwilderness.com slash YouTube. But um, decluttering does a lot of things. It gives us the ability to take in more um, as far as just mentally, not physically, but just mentally. The amount of weight and clutter that clutter leaves for us is just insane. So yes, Tammy, I totally hear you and kudos to you and the crew for decluttering. Jill says, some fear and anger can motivate a person to get things done as long as it's in small bits. That's actually the next segment of this class because that's why I said how to learn to use fear and anger to your advantage. So, very good point, sister. All right, and on this app, on here, oh, you know what? Let me see if I can go into the other app because I hate it when I can't see all of your message. So, and on, cre on this creator app, I can click see more and it actually opens something um, on Facebook itself it does not allow me to do that oh good there's more comments coming in keep talking to me guys all right let's see okay so back to Diana she said I'm grateful for the fasting summit that I've been listening to the last several days so much great information I'm very grateful for you in this time each Wednesday ah oh, thank you sweet friend I'm grateful that you guys join me. Like I said, I'm not the hero. This is all of us. This is a community. This is not an individual thing. And I'm just, I mean, I can sit here and talk to the screen by myself and pretend people are talking to me, but you guys come out and you talk to me and it's very fulfilling to me and I love it and I love you guys. All right, so Jackie says, Jackie Berry says, when I can't handle what is in front of me, fear, I pray and ask God to carry it because it is too heavy for me. Fear comes from Satan. Amen. Faith helps me to be positive. Prayer journals are wonderful, and you can always go back and read them when you need strength. Very much so. And, and that's what I'm saying. And, and I love that it's becoming an addiction for me. Um, I used to view it, I guess, as a something I had to do or that I, you know, would, I don't know. But I, I have as much desire to do this as I do to sit and talk to God. And, and that is very powerful to me. That I... I I treasure my time with God. It's something that I seek, that I yearn for, and oftentimes, you know, I have my devoted time in the morning, but sometimes I'll just go out and seek Him, you know, and it's, especially in this, you saw my outside. If you did not see the beginning of this video, you've got to go back and watch it. I showed you my beautiful landscape here. It is just amazing. Okay, she says, I still haven't picked up my journal, Tammy says. So, okay, well, we're going to work on that. We'll get you a journal. You can use your Evernote. <laughs> and Jill says, I just use loose paper, pieces of paper. Yeah, you don't need to use anything fancy. Um, it is nice. To, I like it that it's bound, and um, my journal is refillable. So every year I can keep using the same cover and just slap a new journal in there, which is what I did this year. And then I, I kind of keep them organized. Uh, they, they will fit into a... Um, a box so it makes it easy to just keep them stored neatly so I don't have clutter <laughs> so Diana says self-talk is something I have to be aware of all the time yeah guys you know I, I started bringing that up with living with intention but I started paying a lot of attention to that in 2016 I was flat on my back I was frustrated where I was until I realized God had me where he needed me but I realized I was saying things like you're old you're useless you know and and, and we have the ability we have the ability to make or break ourselves you know it's bad enough that other people choose to do those things but we need to build on ourselves and I started making a list of the things I was saying to myself and I started to make a list on the flip side of that repeating those positive things to myself on a daily basis as part of my morning routine and you know what I honestly don't remember the last time I've said something negative to myself and I'm really thankful for that and that could be why I feel so good because we have the greatest ability to empower our own selves and to help our bodies and our minds 
think differently about ourselves. We have the amazing gift of healing through our words. So please, 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 in your journal, make a list of the things that you are saying in a negative way to yourself and turn those babies around. If you need to put, I was going to say put a note on your mirror in the morning, um, but instead of that, you could even use those chalk markers or those mirror markers and write it on your mirror. But have it in front of you. I think I mentioned it last week. The one, My one dear friend, Fran, that I used to work with, used to have sticky notes all over her dashboard. You know, she knew, she knew what she was doing. Be aware of what you're saying to yourself because you are amazing and you have a lot to offer this world. Okay? Uh, Terry Perry says, thank you for the books you told me about. You betcha. I, I know they will help. And um, Tammy says, that is neat. Can't wait to see the finished basket. Oh, thank you. Yeah, I'm so excited. And I'm going to get the mountain boy involved because it's like a hands-on thing. I know he will thoroughly enjoy that too. I'm telling you, these apps are painful. Technology is great if only it works. Um, the reason I say that is because one app, I can see all the comments, but I can't see them all. The other app only shows me the, the top ones. So it's kind of crazy. Let's see. Um, Terry says, thank you for giving me support and reminding me God does hear my prayers and isn't giving up on me. You betcha. You bet. Um, I'm going to touch on that now since you mentioned that, Terry. Um, and I want to mention this to Tina, too. Um, Tina, I don't know if your walk is, um, you know, that your focus is on God or not. That is something that's very powerful to me and has helped me greatly. Um... But when we pray to God and we don't hear his voice, we don't hear an answer, it can be very difficult. Um, the mountain man shared a testimonial on our YouTube channel the other day expressing that although he wasn't proud of it, he felt he lost faith a couple times in this walk this year. It's been very hard, guys. If, we could, if you would be walking this with us, I think you'd be in awe that we aren't just sitting in a corner rocking and crying. I mean, it has been really, really something, but I'm just so proud of how we're handling it and how we're walking it and what God's doing and how God's using us. So many testimonials coming in of how our walk is helping other people. So praising Jesus for that because that is what it's about, and that's why I felt it was so important for us to be transparent through this as much as it might be at times embarrassing, at other points just raw. Um, it's important that we show what our walk is like and, and that we can be a light to others. I give God all the glory for this. Like I told you, I don't have to prepare for these things. He just feeds me. And 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 you guys feed me. And, and you ask me the questions you ask me that, you know, create a new a new video. But when we pray... One of the things that I struggled with is at one point, you know, my faith is very strong. Um, I'm very positive. I wasn't lacking any of that. What I was lacking was my ability to trust in my own decisions. Um, I wasn't getting any answers, any clear direction from God. And, you know, a lot of people get very discouraged and turn their back on God when that happens. And I want to encourage you to realize that that silent place that you're in is a good place. God is working silently behind the scenes, doing amazing things. Trust me, through my, through my struggle at that point, God was working. And he was doing amazing, amazing things. It puts us in a place of weight. We are human beings and we don't do good waiting. We struggle with waiting. We want immediate results. And it's in that waiting place that God is teaching you to have stronger faith and endurance and resilience and patience and perseverance, all those good positive words. That's what he's teaching. And, and sometimes that wait will bring on a, hu a horrendous revelation. But um, I know many of you out there through our conversations deal with the same thing. And it's in that silent, quiet place that we start to get discouraged and we start to let fear set in and we um, allow it to debilitate us to the point that I was not comfortable making any form of decisions. And um, like I read in that devotional, we're not supposed to sit still 
and, and you know, surrender and just, you know, okay, here I am. Um, we need to still keep moving and still keep living and still keep uh, persevering and pulling into Him and, and doing the best we can. And what I found in that quiet place is that God just wanted me to do, to live life, but not to make a decision, just to wait. And, and that's, that's a hard place to be in for many people. Once I established what I was experiencing, and sometimes that's part of our walk, is understanding what we're experiencing and learning from each part of the walk. I've talked about how the enemy attacks. Our negative words to ourselves is one of the ways he attacks. Another way is he debilitates us. And, and he whispers things in our ears. And he, he causes friction in the family. Family is the, one of the biggest things he goes after. And for us right now, we are wearing our situation on our sleeve. We are wearing our heart on our sleeve. We are testifying every week and during the week on our videos. And, and it's like a great calamity. He doesn't like that. And he's trying to stop us. And he uses all kinds of crazy antics to try to stop us. And you know what? Once you start getting in tune with that and realize that there really is such a thing as spiritual attacks and there really is such things as the enemy lurking in there and trying to tear things apart, he's here to steal, kill, and destroy, and he will continue to do that. When we are in this walk and all of a sudden you know, you're in this spot and you're frustrated and you're weight and maybe you feel like your faith is lacking and all of a sudden you go, oh my word, get out of my house, get off my shoulder, leave me alone, leave my family alone. You know, you can pray over your, your home and your family and yourself and your body and all that. You can call out to God and rebuke the enemy. The enemy's going to be lurking all the time, guys. And he uses all these little antics and tactics to get us. And once we start being smart enough to realize that, wow, okay, it's negative. God's not present. That's not God. That's the enemy trying to, like, just sneak his way in there. And he is. So... I want you guys to really clearly think about that in your daily walk and how much he is trying to do that and how easily we can tell him to go pound sand. It's a great feeling. Really, it is. When you can tell him to just go and he goes, he doesn't have a choice. We are bigger than he is. We, we have more power than he does. But we don't realize that and we don't give ourselves that ability we just stay in that fearful spot, maybe in that anger spot. So this is where we can use fear to our advantage. Hey, girlfriend, Ashley, I see that you are joining. She said, just now saw you were chatting, so I'm just turning, tuning in. Wonderful. Good morning. Um, I'm not seeing the comments on my screen. It's not sharing that with me for some reason today. So I'm using another app, so I'm trying to keep up. This is definitely working the brain, causing some multitasking fuel to go on here. But what are some of the things you guys find? Um, you shared with me what you're grateful for. I want to want you to share with me how you see the enemy seeping into your days. Because it's important that we realize that. And it's also important to realize how easy it is to get, to get rid of him. Now... Um, Going through our hard times, sometimes, and this applies to Tina and I, and I'm sure there's others of you out there going through things. Good morning, Rachel. Um, no matter what your walk is, no matter what the struggle is, the same tools um, are available, and the same tools will help you. Um, being aware of what's going on in our day-to-day -day is important and um, allowing God to empower us through these situations is also important. We are at a point, and Tina was at a point, where you can, you can only do so much. You can push and you can push and you can push. You can darn near kill yourself in trying to remedy the situation. Yet there is no remedy because the time is not, it's not that time yet. And, you know, we were given clear instruction to wait. Wait on making decisions. Uh, we, we put prayer requests out for that phone call, and we were told to wait. And we did. And although our answer was, in some ways, a negative answer, 
Um, in essence, we've lost our home. Um, but we've been given the miracle of having the opportunity to still try to sell it. And um, I don't know what kind of time frame we have. I don't know that it's very long. But God granted us that miracle. Now, um, others of you going through a similar experience may not be blessed in that same way. But I want you to be... I guess why I'm at such peace is because regardless what direction it goes, regardless what we have to walk out, I'm prepared for it and I'm okay for, with it because we are asking for God's will, not ours. So if I would have had to quickly pack things up, um, we couldn't live in our wall tent because it's coated in, in black mold. We don't have the money to buy a new tent, but we would have figured it out. And, and the thing is, is as God walks you through the journeys you're on, he will make a way for everything. So if we were to end up out, you know, yesterday, and we had to find a place for our things and, and find a roof over our head, I know that we would have been cared for, and I know that we would have been provided. So um, having that peace is really important. And just knowing that and accepting that removes a lot of fear and a lot of anger and and again it's that focus on the positive and I know that I am at a place that the average man is not and I know that I'm at this place because of what I've walked through and I know that I'm at this place because I've seeked God intensely and that was my passion was to seek him and to seek his answers and to seek his comfort and his peace so that puts me in the place I am. And just it being a choice. You know, we make choices every day. And there was a point in my life where fear and anger would be consuming me right now. Um, and when we're in these places of deep despair, it's easy to be extremely fearful and extremely angry. And those two things will bind and brew Good morning, Cindy, and create such chaos in our lives. And that's why it's there. That's why he sneaks in and that's why he places that there, knowing very well that it will, like a Petri dish, just breed. A lot of the struggles people have, I feel result back to unforgiveness and varying things. Um, and, and one of the books I, I recommend greatly is the book called, um, just left me. You can find the link by going to treyerwilderness.com slash wronged. Um, I can't remember the exact title. My brain just left me. If one of you that I've shared it with recently would like to share the title, um, and I've shared it before, but uh, that link will take you directly to it. It's a book on forgiveness. And, um, Forgiveness allows us to remove fear and anger from our lives. And that, I think, is a really big step in pushing forward and being able to be more positive. And I think every one of us has a reason to um, be stuck in that forgiveness state of unforgiveness. And when we are stuck in that place of unforgiveness, we uh, hold other negative feelings and thoughts and we really kind of are stuck in a stagnant place. So I want to encourage you guys to read this book. I've read a, a bunch of books on forgiveness. Through the walks of my life, I've had to forgive a lot of people. And I've had to be forgiven too. And um, some of the things were extreme. And some of the things were constant. Like um, I had to constantly keep forgiving. Because those thoughts would re-enter my mind those hurts would come back up and surface and that's okay you want that you don't want to stuff them but you want to keep um, just going through the motions of forgiveness and by doing so you free yourself so much to focus on so much better things in life and um, anger you know Jill mentioned in her comment about how um, the two can really push you forward when I go through a bout of anger, that anger really stews in me or suddenly rises. And, and it's funny, as I walk through this journey of life, um, 
I can't remember the last time I've been angry. And also, um, you know, anger, anger sticks at a certain point in your life where now, like I said, I don't even remember the last time I was angry and it takes, takes me such a long time. It takes a lot. Like if it were just because of one person, they'd have to keep pinging and pinging and pinging and pinging and pinging and pinging until they finally got me to that point. So um, my anger muscles and my fear muscles are really strong. That, they, that it keeps me from being in that place. And I guess that's more my faith and my trust muscles. And my positive muscles are strong that are keeping those other emotions at bay. Maybe that's how I should put it. Um, but when you have the ability to forgive and you strengthen those areas of your life, um, it's really helpful because all those negative emotions don't enter anymore. But when I get angry, if something makes me angry, it like I'll give you an example. I can think of one now. You know, on occasion, when I go through bouts like I did in December, um, where all of a sudden some crazy thing happens and my health is just debilitated where I had been doing so good, I will get angry and I'll tell you what happens as a result. One of the things that made me get angry, um, now that I think about it, was a couple months ago, two months ago I guess. I ended up with a hiatal hernia as a result of my illness. And um, everything had been so swollen and things just didn't have anywhere to go. So I just inevitably ended up with a hiatal hernia. Well, I am somebody who likes to work out a lot. I have a very strong core. I use my core muscles a lot. And I found that in using my core muscles with a hiatal hernia, I would cause it to pop and to, to the, the hernia to be uh, causing me struggles. It's very hard when you're building a homestead, when you're moving things, you know, to constantly depend on help. And, you know, God put me in that place in 2016 so that I would learn to accept help. And I still do accept help. But this hiatal hernia was really bothering me. I'm trying to strengthen my core. I'm trying to remove the hiatal hernia. And I just cried out to God. I was really pissed and I cried out to God and asked him to just remove it from me in Jesus' name. And would you know, I do not have any more problems with that at all. It's gone. So, fear and anger can come out in a very brilliant way. And um, you have to have trust and faith in that, too. But that is what happened. And... That anger, if something goes wrong on my computer, just for example, I'm a web designer. I'm creating a website. I'm trying and trying for days. I get angry, and I just flip out. And all of a sudden, I realize what I need to do to fix that. Or I will go to sleep, walk away from it, go to sleep. God blesses me in my dreams. Since I've been a programmer, it's been the weirdest thing. I will dream about what the problems were that I was having during the day and actually fix it in my sleep and then wake up and fix it. I know that's crazy, but it does happen, and it has happened, and I, I am just amazed at it all the time. But anger can catapult us forward. So if you use anger and fear in the right way, you can allow it to catapult you forward in your experiences and push you to a stronger faith and trust. It, those negative, when you acknowledge the negative um, experiences you are having and acknowledge that they need to be changed, um, that's when you can use those as a uh, basically springboard to get you forward. So when you're in situations that cause you to be angry and fearful, acknowledge that. And also when you let go of um, stuck unforgiveness, you know, once you get, once you forgive and have the ability to forgive a lot of these negative um, traits tend to dissipate. It's really important. So I encourage you to check out that book. Um, time makes forgiveness easier. Yes, it does. It does. And learning to love those that you need to forgive. Some of you may just have gone, what did you just say? But it's a real truth. We are called to love people. And regardless what the wrong is, we need to love them but not love the crime or love them and not love the hurt, or love them and not love the wounds you still have and the scars that st are still there. And it doesn't mean that you need to, 
when you forgive somebody or a, a situation, it doesn't mean that you need to now be in their presence. I have people in my life that I have forgiven, but I will never walk in the same room with them again. Um, I know it wouldn't be healthy. I, uh, I just feel that it, it, it's a better place for me to be as a way. So when you acknowledge forgiveness of them and you still love them, and it enables you to, to walk past that. And um, all of these things I'm sharing with you are stepping stones to a stronger faith and trust walk. And to when you're in the hard times that you can experience them in such a different way. Like I said, I would not give up. I told, I told the mountain man last night, I said, and he looked at me a little funny, but he got what I meant. Um, I wouldn't trade these last three years for anything. My growth and my connection and my relationship with Christ has grown so strong. And I, I just love it. I love it. I love where I'm at. And I love where this has brought us. And I know that our future will be amazing, um, regardless what God brings our way. I see that there are some messages. I'm going to try this again. Um, Rachel says, fear is not of God. Exactly. So when we live in fear, we are not living in trust, peace, and love. Love is... Hold on, let me... No. Okay. I cannot see the whole comment. Let me see if I go over here, if I can see the whole comment, because I would really like to. So ask God to help you receive his love and have a love encounter with him. It is much more easy to live without fear once encountering God's love. This is a personal testimony. Yes, and I know that, Rachel, that that is a personal testimony. And um, we were talking about that earlier, and I shared something very similar. So that is, that is and, and there you guys go. That's a second to confirm that what I'm saying is a truth. The more we pull into God and the more we draw on God's love, the more these things disappear. And um, thank you for sharing that, Rachel. And it is, it's so important, guys. And it's so important for us to share these testimonies, our testimonies, with each other. It's really powerful. Bec and it's... Um, and I want to encourage you guys. I know that you know some of you don't have the personality I do. Some of you aren't um, as outspoken. But share share your stories. You guys have stories to share. I know that in talking to many of you over the last couple weeks, you guys have stories, and they're powerful testimonies. And even though people may look at you like you have six heads when you share them, you're planting a seed. Um, Terry says, my fear is the, is the devil telling me God isn't hearing me and doesn't care about what happens to my marriage. When this happens, I cry out and ask God to send him back where he came from. Amen. 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 When we start to have fear and questions things, um, oh, David and Donna Williams are on here and she says, sorry, late for the bus. Nope. Welcome. Glad to have you. And, um... It's, it's really important that we acknowledge these things. Like I'm saying, when you feel these negative emotions setting in, to know where they are coming from and just to reverse them. And, and guys, I will be the first to admit, there are days, there have been days, they have been far and few between, and they have always been that way in my life. Um, but I'm learning more and more how to deal with them on my own. What would happen is I would get in a spot and I would get low and I'd feel like I wouldn't have my own strength to pull myself out and I'd request prayers from my friends and there is nothing wrong with that I have amazing prayer warriors amazing prayer warriors thank you Tammy thank you Rachel thank you Chad thank you Terry there's so many of you out there Diana Sylvia all you guys on here you know when you're willing to pray for somebody that is really powerful and I still do ask for prayer but what I have learned is when I get to that place is to give myself grace I know where it's coming from and I am giving myself grace to have that day to just allow my emotions to move through my body and that tomorrow is going to be a much better day and you know I used to look at it as a whole day and just let you know just okay write the day off you know it was just one of my days that I needed to emotionally regroup 
But you know what? We can do it even faster than that, and that is asking our friends for prayer. Power of prayer and more than two or three people together, uh, God is present. It says that directly in the Bible. You know, when we hold to these truths, um, it's so important. But then when we turn and pull into God and just melt in His presence, and, you know, I love the Carrie Joby song, uh, I just want to sit at your feet. I know that's not the name of the song. I'll share the link later. It's an awesome song. But that we sit at his feet and we take in his comfort. You know, it's a being and it's hard for a lot of people because you can't see God and you can't um, often feel his presence. But the beauty is, is when you get past that and know that he's just there and know that he's just loving on you, there's such a power in that. And sometimes, you know, when we're in this place, we need to walk away. Walk away from just whatever we're doing. Uh, when, when I go out into my winter wonderland, into my landscape, into my God's country, and just let Him surround me, you know, 10, 15 minutes and just pulling into Him can totally change things. And I'm so grateful to know that I have that ability and that I have that promise so I want to encourage you guys to remember that and, and to seek that and to learn how to be able to gain a really quick turnaround time. And, and guys, I know there are many of you out there that um, deal with depression and anxiety and um, those are hard places to be. I've been there too um, and you know you might you might need a little bit more time but give yourself grace give yourself grace and know that you are human know that you need a little extra loving and and don't be hard on yourself when you get in those places where you just you just need somebody's arms around you whether it's human or God's and you know there's so much power in a hug in a physical hug so you know, I'm, I'm blessed to have good huggers. My mountain man junior is, is a hugger, and I'm thankful for that because most autistic people do not like touch. And um, he has always needed a hug, and it's very powerful. So, you know, whatever we're walking, there's so many of you walking so many unbelievable and different walks than ours. And... I know that we're paralleling in a lot of ways with the emotions and the experiences and the feelings that we are going through. And, you know, regardless of your walk, just know you are loved, know you have resources, know you have people that were, will pray for you. Guys, in the description below is an ever-growing list of prayer requests. I am humbled and amazed and awed every week when people share stories with me and their testimonies. We had Courtney's amazing testimony. Um, there are other people on that list and I put, you know, a lot of people share some very personal, personal things with me. So I put first names and I don't put the details because God knows the details. We don't need to know the details of your prayer requests. But if you need prayer, you need loving arms wrapped around you, please don't hesitate to leave that information in the comments below. We are forming an amazing community and a fellowship every Wednesday here. And you know, it awes me to see you communicating amongst each other and praying for each other. And you know, Shelly had reached out to me with health issues. Um, health issues that she's had her whole life. And God amazingly brought her into healing. And she is progressing in a positive way. Courtney, I, I want to mention this too. I shared Courtney's testimony last week, I think it was, or the week before. And Courtney has a small area of the tumor left in her, in her brain that they could not remove. It was wrapped around a blood vessel and they were afraid that if they removed it that it would cause a seizure. So she is going back down to um, Arizona on the 20th to the 24th and um, for reevaluation and determination as to whether she needs radiation or chemo. I can't remember which. I think chemo. Nevertheless, my prayer right now is that God heals her. It's a small portion of 
um, tumor. There's no reason God can't remove that and heal her. And I would love to uh, have her, her mother Kelly reach out and say, miraculously, when they did the MRI and all the scans, there's nothing there. It can happen, guys. And that's what I'm praying for, and I hope you'll join me. But it's just amazing to hear the testimonies that are coming from our powerful prayer network. And I want you guys to continue that. It's amazing. I can't see them now, but show me lots of hearts on that, guys, because we are building a community of prayer warriors, and we are building a community of people that can fellowship together and not be afraid to share our stories and not be afraid to grow and not be afraid of of speaking you know God's name and Jesus name and and saying Christ in a, a community of people that, that you feel like you have to be fearful you know how many of us have walked that walk where we weren't shining our light where we weren't speaking in certain uh, communities of people because we were fearful of what they would think or that they would react and you know what I don't care anymore God is leading our way he is working miracles and he is shining his light and I just I want that I want that to be uh, so clear here. So guys, if you have needs for prayer, please don't hesitate to share them. If you know people that are in need of prayer, don't be afraid to share that. Um, I want to share something else with you. This was today's, and I think that you'll appreciate it. Psalms 18:6. In my distress, I cried out to the Lord. There are many times in life when, when the best thing you can do is cry out to God from the depths of your being. Don't worry about looking undignified or having people think you have no faith. The psalmist said, in my distress I cried out to the Lord and he heard me. Every parent knows that cry. It's different. It's not a temper tantrum or a whine for attention. It's a cry of distress. And though it comes in the dead of night, before you know it, your feet hit the floor and you're at your child's side, holding them, changing them, feeding them, and comforting them. That's how God feels about you. When you get so low that you're reaching up just to touch bottom, cry out to God. David said he reached down and drew me out of the great trials. He rescued me. On the day I was weakest, they attacked, but the Lord held me steady. He led me to a place of safety, for he delights in me. He delights in you too, guys. David discovered that God was, was his high tower. In Bible times, a high tower was a place of safety where the enemy couldn't get to you. Proverbs 18.10 says, The name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous run to it and are safe. It, repents a place of secure, it represents a place of security in God where you're lifted above the threat and the circumstances. It's where you regain your perspective, a place where you look ahead and know this trial will soon be over. Go ahead, cry out to God, and he will answer. I'm going to reread that. And this is where I'm at. I think that's why I found so much uh, enjoyment in this this morning, because I think this pretty much explains and sums up where I am at. It represents a place of security in God where you're lifted above the threat and the circumstance. You find peace a giddy peace and happiness and joy in your life. It's where you regain your perspective. Instead of being so fearful or angry or whatever the negative emotion is and, and that jaded view, that clouded view of the negativity, you finally able to regain perspective. It's a place where you look ahead and you know that your trial will soon be over. It, and they'll be good on the other side, guys. We, every, every year people seek a new year for a new beginning. But every year, excuse me, each year brings another trial of sorts. It may not be as bad as the one the year before, but there's always going to be trials. It's not about waiting and seeking for a new year for no trials. It's learning how to battle and, and wear your armor and, and warrior up and make it through the challenge. It's being prepared for the challenge. It's being giddy when a new challenge comes on board because you know that you're going to gain something from it. I know that's sick and warped to many of you, but I, I embrace my challenges. I've been embracing my challenges throughout the years. This has been our biggest one. This has been my biggest one in life so far, and I've gone through some pretty heavy ones in the past. It's, it's being prepared for that. And, and I'm, I'm trying to prepare you. I'm trying to teach you how to use the skills God gives us 
and to use our biggest tool in seeking Him. So go ahead, cry out to God, and He will answer you. Trust me, guys, He will answer your prayers. One of the things we have found is when we have something upon us that's really heavy, really scary, really lurking, really weighing us down, we stop and we pray to God to just give us peace, give us comfort, give us wisdom, give us knowledge, give us direction, and help us to walk His will. I'm going to share something with you guys. Um, you know, some of you may think I'm kooky. Some of you know this happened to me. I'm going to share this with you. Not this past Saturday, but the Saturday before. I was doing a treatment, and I was taking care of myself, and, um, you know, there's been a lot, of, a lot of stuff going on. It's one thing after the other. Many of you can relate. I pull my finger up to my nose, and I, just lightly with my knuckle, I caught my nose the wrong way, and all I heard was this hideous snap. <laughs> like, you got to be kidding me. I'm trying to heal myself, and I just broke my nose. For real. I did. I broke my own stinking nose. You can't make this stuff up, and I know many of you are walking walks where you're like, you just can't make this up. You get tired of telling people your stories because they just think you're making this stuff up because it's just so beyond normal. It's so beyond recognition and comprehension. Yes, I broke my own nose. I took a drink of water. The water was cold, and I instantly got pain shooting up my front tooth because my nerve, I thought... I thought something happened to the nerve of my tooth. It actually did. When I cracked this, and I don't know exactly what I did. I did not go for attention. Sorry, the noise you're hearing is my blue healer who is going blind, digging what he thinks is a blanket on the plywood floor. I think he's finally settled down. Okay, so I make it into like Thursday, and I'm dealing with just teeth pain and pressure here and my glasses were causing me struggles having them on the bridge of my nose and then it dawned on me when it moved from this tooth to this tooth and then went to my back molars that what must have happened is when I snapped this it must have grazed a nerve hit a nerve and it was affecting my teeth so I made up a I was going to make up a recipe for myself to take as a supplement to help with the nerve uh, uh, sensitivity and I was missing two of the herbs, so I called my dear friend Denzel and Suzanne, who I will be sharing with you soon, and um, call it divine intervention, if you will. He was making the exact recipe and couldn't believe that I had the same recipe and that he was making it for somebody else and he was making a liquid of it because he was going to make a salve, so he saved me a bottle of liquid so that I could use it as a swish instead of a pill. And um, I was going to pick it up Friday. Friday I went to my basket class. I had a great time at the basket class. I'm sitting there at the basket class and I could feel the pressure just getting insanely, just really increasing. I started getting a really bad headache. And I left, went to get the swishy, swishy stuff and they were closed. I forgot they closed at one and it was three. Went to a local chiropractor just to see, you know, what he would suggest as far as my nose, if my if this was touching on something, if I needed to get attention. And I went home, they didn't know what to do. And I have other people I could check with, but I came home and I just laid on the couch. I had such intense pain. I know Ashley will understand the intense, intense pain I was experiencing, and maybe many of you. It was just so bad that I felt like I was gonna throw up or pass out. It just got really bad and all of a sudden the mountain man it was kind of funny to me I didn't mention this to him but it was almost like a light bulb went on to him and he grabbed the mountain man junior and they came over and they prayed over me and about 15 minutes later I just started to experience com all of it completely just dissipating and Saturday I woke up and I have no longer any pains of any kind, any pains really in my teeth. My teeth have always been sensitive, um, so that's normal. Um, but And I do feel a little bit of pressure here, but it all just dissipated. And, you know, we forget that we have that power 
to do that and to pray over each other and to pray over ourselves even. I told you I prayed over that hernia, you know. I know you guys may think it's crazy, but I want you guys to learn how to tap into the powers that we are given. It, it says we have the ability to move mountains. And if our faith and our trust grows in such a way, we have the power to do that. And I'm learning that. I didn't used to walk this out. I didn't used to understand that. I didn't used to even attempt it. And, and um, now I'm seeing those powers and I'm seeing uh, my family grow in such amazing faith and strength through this. And the key thing is, guys, is that, you know, when we're walking these hard walks, I know some of you are walking some extremely hard walks right now. Kelly and Shelly and Terry, you know, many of you are walking things different than I am. But your pains are still there and the hard is still there. The hard part is still there. Uh-oh, my battery's dying. Hang on one quick second. I'm almost done here. I'm just going to say our prayer, but I want to make sure that I don't lose you through the... Okay. I'm just going to relocate and I'll say my prayer over there. But the thing is, is that we need to, when we pull into God through these circumstances, it enables us to regain that new perspective, like it's said in here, you know, that we... God, we, 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 it represents a place of security in God where you're lifted above the threat and the circumstance. And you trust in that and you go for that. I mean, that's what we all want is a, a, a peace, a removal from our circumstances. And maybe our walk is long. Our walk has been three years. But the, and I, and I, I don't want to discourage you with that. But the thing is, when you find the tools to pull yourself out of those places, and that you you are able to regain your perspective. Sometimes that's the hugest, the, the biggest thing that you can do is to regain your perspective on things. You know, that sometimes our fears and our angers and all those negative feelings and emotions that we allow to seep in tend to jade our, our view of things and they end up being a lot worse or we're making them a lot worse than they actually are. You know, I'm going to just give you an example. At the, that popped in my head, you know, like say somebody um, harms you, uh, a friendship, you have a friendship and all of a sudden they uh, abandon you and the enemy seeps in and starts, well this or what about this or they're doing this or they, and you just harbor on it. And when you harbor on that, you're totally blowing things out of perspective most likely you're totally blowing things out of proportion you're totally making your life miserable that's where we need to pull in and just allow the perspective to be presented to us um, so just just learn where to keep your focus more than anything learn to keep your focus on God and learn to turn your negative into positives it's a practice and Tina you know I, I might make it look easy, but this is, I, I just turned 49. It's a life, it's a life for me of building up to where I am. And I'm sharing this stuff so that if you are 20 and you're watching me, you don't need to wait till you're 49, okay? Learn these things. I'm sharing this to help you. And I'm sharing this to give you guys the comfort and peace that I have in this hard, hard walk that I'm walking. And, you know, sometimes through the walks that we are going through, um, we can be the light to other family members who are struggling. And like I've said to you many times, we've been blessed that neither one of us are down at the same time so that we can keep lifting each other up. And that has happened. Um, and, and those hugs are powerful, you know. But it's just so important to learn this and to put on your, your Ephesians 6, your war, your... your, your um, armor every day and and to write in your gratitude journal every day and to to pray and to focus on God every day and if you can't pray because you're getting squirreling and your mind is turning all in different places write it in your journal write it like you are praying you know um, it works and and I have links to the apps I'm using one of them was coach.me 
Yes. I think that's what it is. It's down below. Um, it's a great app and it has helped me greatly. I, I can see myself forming new habits, one of which is writing in my journal every day. Um, I created the habits that I wanted to really put into place this year that I may have been trying for a long time. And it also, I have habits in there that I want to break. Um, using this app has put it to my attention daily and, and made it uh, visible to me every day so that I am focusing on those things and I, I feel really grateful for that because I, I've used other tools in the past and they just haven't been as effective. This is effective. You got to find what works for you. That's what I told you guys last week. I think I see comments coming across. Yes, I do. No, maybe I don't. Okay. Just wanted to make sure. I love being able to answer you guys while I'm on the air. Okay. So, if you have questions, if you have concerns, if you have prayers, um, you can either private message me, email me at survive at treyerwilderness.com, or you can leave it in the comments below, whether on YouTube or here on Facebook. Um, I really, really appreciate you guys joining me. And I hope that, you know, some, like I said, some of you may think that what I'm sharing is kooky and really far fetched, but I, I will be dancing and, and, and rejoicing when you guys uh, get to where I am because it's, a, it's just an amazing walk. So amazing. I've always had God in my life. I may have strayed from God when I was younger, but I've always had God present. God's always been there. But this is just an amazing, amazing place to be. I can't express it enough. Um, I'm going to mention a couple things that I think would be really good tools for you guys to strengthen your faith walk. Um, th these are really powerful um, tools for me. They really um, just touch me in such big ways. The movie War Room, I think I mentioned it even last week, is um, a movie on prayer, the power of prayer. And you can find it by going to treyerwilderness.com slash war room. That is a movie that is made by the Kendricks brothers. They have made other movies. You may be familiar with them. You may not be, but I encourage you to watch them all. They are they're amazing for what they consider to be low budget films they are they are very well done and they just touch the soul um, in addition to war room there is courageous there is flywheel fireproof uh, facing the giants that was a great one that one actually really helped me when I landed on the farm uh, I always say landed in the mountain man just laughs. When I ended up on the farm and I was living on the farm where I met the mountain man, um, I was I had uh, removed myself from an abusive marriage and I was really in a low place and that movie just changed my life. It was just very empowering. Um, so Facing the Giants is another good one. Um, Fire, Fireproof I mentioned is about a um, couple that's having marriage struggles. Um, courageous is about fathers and their role in the family and uh, but they're all just so amazing so war room is one that we have and we watch on a regular basis and I love it um, mountain man junior comes to me he's like let's watch that or let's watch courageous or um, so you know I know that he's obviously being nurtured in some way by them also another movie that I want to recommend to you guys is the shack you can find that by going to treyerwilderness.com slash the shack there was a lot of controversy over that movie um, but I I truly believe it is something very very worth watching it is a movie on forgiveness but there's a lot of other aspects of a Christian walk and a prayer walk and uh, just a life a life walk with Christ in it um, and and I just think it's very powerful, and I think that it's something that you guys should also uh, consider watching. All these movies are family friendly, and um, another place you can go for spiritual um, inspiration is pureflix.com. You can go to them and get a month free by going to treyerwilderness.com slash pureflix. It's P-U-R-E-F-L-I-X. And those are things that we do 
um, when we're looking for one of those nights to either encourage us, inspire us, or just to veg. Um, it's just nice to let your brain have a rest sometimes, and that's what we lead to is something that's going to nurture us and encourage us. So I just wanted to mention those. So guys, thank you for joining me. Thank you for taking this long of amount of time out of your day and um, sharing with me and, and just allowing me to ramble on here. Hopefully you gained something from this. If you have gained something from this, I encourage you to share it. Um, lots of hearts for me is helpful too. That helps me to reach more people on Facebook. So the activity you guys give me on here is very helpful in helping my video to go out and reach more people. So I thank you. And I, I just, I love you all. You guys are all walking different, hard, painful walks. Some of you are walking joy-filled walks. But it's, it's awesome to be able to share and see how God is working in our lives. So I'm going to uh, pray here. Dear Lord, I just come to you this morning, and I thank you for all of these individuals that have taken the time to watch this long video and uh, to just try to learn to walk closer to you, to um, desire your presence in their lives, to seek you. And Lord, I just ask that you wrap your loving arms around everyone. So many are struggling and walking through the heart. Just wrap your loving arms around them. Give them peace. Give them comfort. Give them direction. Help them in the, in the quiet times and in that time where we're supposed to wait on you. Help them to be empowered by it and have a perspective and a comfort and a peace through it versus allowing those negative emotions to enter and, and add fear and anger and any of the other despair and negative feelings that we, we sometimes allow ourselves to hold tight to and allow us to learn that when those feelings are present that the enemy is present and allow us to pull into you and seek that peace and comfort we need so that we, we can be above our circumstances and that we can just have a reprieve and, and be filled by you. And Lord, I just thank you for taking my family through this walk and giving us the courage to be transparent so that we can help others on this journey and though many may think I'm kooky, I hope that the seeds I plant will sometime grow and that they will understand the power they have and the abilities they have in you. And Lord, I just ask that you help them to seek you and, and learn that just praying to you is just something as simple as sitting and talking and finding you and needing you and having that addiction to just want to spend time with you. And Lord, just help them to see the good, even if it's small and every day and every aspect of things that they're going through. And Lord, I just thank you for these people. I ask that you wrap your loving arms around all of our prayer requests. Some of them are asking and, and, thank, and thanking uh, you for the good you've done in their lives. And some have shared the testimonies of the amazing miracles that you're working and others are needing healing and in, in deep despair from the struggles they're going through. And you know all of them. And I know that you will wrap your arms around them and give them what they need and provide for them. And Lord, I just ask that you specifically be with Pat Kenny right now and just heal his heart. I ask that you be with Courtney and remove that tumor completely from her in Jesus' name. And Lord, I just thank you for what you're going to do in each of our lives and how you're going to show your miracles through each of us and how our, each of us is going to start shining a brighter light and be a light and, and allow each day to be a new beginning if it needs to be. And through this year's new beginning that we learn to be a light and remove that basket and shine. And Lord, I just thank you for your presence, ever presence, and your presence here today and and what you're doing in our lives and what you're going to do. More importantly than anything, what you're going to do in each of our lives. Thank you. We thank you now in advance for what you're going to do. And we ask this in Jesus' holy and precious name. Amen. Okay, guys. Thank you so much for joining me. Thank you for being a part of our community. And I'm just going to end this by taking you to my 
favorite place and just share a little bit of beauty with you and wish you an amazing, joy-filled, peace-filled day, regardless of what it is that you're walking. I'm going to spin this around, share my surroundings with you again. Look at this. It's just amazing. It's amazing.